from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, three-time world heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis. And from The Daily Show, Michael Costa. With Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects, and we'll play another round of Sling It Forward. And now, in California, we sing There's No Place Like Homeless for the Holidays. Adam Carolla. Oh, yeah. Get it on. Got to get it on a choice. We got man, did you get it on. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for sharing. We love that about you, right, Gina Grand? That's right. Handball, Brian. Cool. <laughs> well, I got uh, stuff to get to from uh, TMZ, but uh, first, uh, Brian's going to give us a health update. So, Brian, why don't you fill us in on what you know? Yeah, sure. Chris has been asking me for a few days, or a week or so now, hey, how about a health update? And I'm like, well, I'm getting a uh, MRI and seeing my doctor for the results next week, this week. So let's uh, hold off till then because I'll have something to talk about at that point. Uh, let's catch everyone up. So uh, for pretty much all of 2020, I've been on some kind of treatment, some kind of me- medication for, you know, for my brain tumor. Um, early on this year, it was Temidar, just classic um, the, the standard treatment, you know, Temidar doctor saw a little shadow in the MRI I didn't like. He's like, let's get out of this thing and put you on the, the old fashioned uh, chemotherapy we all know and love. Did that for a few months. And then around June, he saw a couple little dots on there he didn't like. He's like, you know, I, I, I want to be aggressive with this. So let's uh, put you on this newer medication. Uh, not brand new, but it had been around for a couple of years, but new to you called Stavarga. And we'll keep you on that for hopefully at least six months and see how that goes. And um, I don't know. I haven't been that vocal about it, but the side effects from the Stavarga were really, really, really rough. I mean, the last six months have been the toughest six months I've had physically and and health wise since way back in 2011 or 2009 when I was you know really going through the radiation. Nothing is ever going to come close to that. That'll be that's my rock bottom until I die. That's my rock bottom. I've but, seen uh, this. this description for the medication. I think it was nausea, vomiting, cramps, point shitting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I got it all, Acute. buddy. I got the, I got the Acute wheel. point shitting. <laughs> I got the wheel. Um, Wait, was got, this what happened to, like, your fingers and your yeah. feet and that kind of thing? I, I, I would... T- if people casually like, how you doing, man? Like, I, I wouldn't lie to them. They're like, I'm doing great. I, I would try to summarize it as, like, everything hurts from my head to my toes. Like, like the bottoms of my feet became blistered and sore and, and bruised from the medication. Like it hurt to walk. I'd have to, you know, wear socks to bed every night with like aquaphor on my feet just to help the skin kind of regenerate. It it was constantly chasing this dragon. Um, everything hurt from my head to my feet. There were, you know, pick a place. My fingertips, I showed you guys months ago, were just, you know, they blister and they'd get tender. I couldn't open anything. I couldn't open a thing of ketchup, for God's sake. And you certainly couldn't pick up Tessa. No, that, that, that was one of the hardest things because, you know, she's home half the time, you know, with us and I'm not able to do much with her. Um, physically, you guys ever have like an old phone that like, you know, you have, you've had the phone for a while, they've updated the iOS or the operating system or whatever. And next thing you know, you wake up in the morning with a full battery, you check your emails, you check your social media, whatever you do, you have breakfast. Next thing you know, it's down like 50, 60%, like Mm. the battery's like halfway gone. That's how I felt for the last six months. I, I, I had no energy like I, my battery gets sapped just so quickly at the end of the day i was i was useless you know poor christy was doing everything ba- bedtime bath time the whole routine um and so uh six months was sort of the sketch like we're gonna do this for six months see you know see what, what we can do uh to knock back this uh tumor stop them growing whatever how about weight loss oh my god well, you can probably see, you know, I look probably thinner, but uh, I, I, the lowest I weighed myself last week or the week before was 133. Well, wow. now you're just bragging. Yeah. I, I'm six feet tall and I walk around, you know, after once uh, Vinny came into our lives and I really embraced keto and did it full time, I was walking around at about 168, 170, you know what I mean? Like right about there was my, was a good fit weight for me. So the, the, the medication just caused, well, number one, we talked about this. Uh, I had no appetite. No, nothing sounded good. I didn't want to eat anything. And on top of that, um, 
I would lose weight, you know, rapidly as a result of being on, not just not eating, but as a result of being on the medication. So it's a double whammy. So fast forward to uh, yesterday when I met with Dr. Rudnick and he comes in and, you know, we're looking at the MRI and he's like, well, the good news is that, you know, the, the the MRI looks the same as it's looked the last few months. Uh, we seem to have stopped whatever tumor progression may have been starting. So, you know, I, just because, you know, obviously your, um, your uh, hope, your hope, you, you, what you want to have happen is like come in and, you know, the MRI looks fantastic. The thing shrunk by half and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't always happen. And he goes, don't get discouraged. I would consider this a win. Like we've stopped the tumor from growing. And I think this is, this is a, a point where we can say thanks and goodbye to the Stavarga. It's, you know, done, you've done six months. You did a great job, you know, doing, you doing the, the whole thing. Like a lot of people would have bailed out, honestly, with their side effects, but you did the whole thing. And now we can say, okay, let's uh, give you six weeks off over the holidays. You know, let's reconvene in January. Let's do an MRI then, see if there is any movement, any progress. Uh, if so, we can reconvene and talk about, you know, maybe another treatment, like, you know, immunotherapies on the table. Um, lots of other things are on the table, because I, you know, I've staved off this uh, latest, you know, round of potential tumor advancement. So uh, he's like, "Yeah, we'll, we'll take some time off, eat, you know, put on some weight, uh, enjoy the holidays, and we'll meet in January. We'll do another another, another MRI then, and uh, you will, you know, go from there. But you did, you know, the Stavarga did its job. That's we're going to call that a win and uh, move forward from there. So mostly, mostly very good news. Really, probably the best case scenario. You know, the the, the tumor didn't progress any. Um, the Stavarga actually worked. I didn't go through all this for nothing." Um, so, uh, I, I, I feel you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm clear. I have energy. Um, I, I probably honestly was thinking about it. I feel the best I have felt in 2020, which is crazy. I felt that I've spent this whole year on cancer treatment, whether it was Temidar or Stavarga or whatever, or some combination of both. And I wanted to say thank you, not just to the people who listen for putting up with what I think will not go down in history as my best year on the podcast. I was frankly out of it for a lot of the time, uh, but also to you guys, you know, you guys have put up with a lot and Adam, as always, showed a lot of, um, a lot of uh, loyalty with me, you know, not always at my best this year, although maybe you couldn't tell, maybe this, maybe this was my best, <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate it to everyone who uh, is listening right now. Well, right back at you. We're family. Got to take care of the family. Not my media family, but no, my no. podcast. Your, your spiritual family. <laughs> my spiritual podcast family. And good. Yeah, I mean, and uh, for, from a technical question, do they get the last MRI and sort of transpose it onto the new MRI? Do they put it on top of each other like when they do with schematics right. or clear, clear graphs? It, it, they, uh, they put it side by side because mm -hmm. uh, my doctor seen... 10,000 of these, so he knows what he's looking at. And also, um, keep in mind, the MRI machine does slices, you know what I mean? So right. they're not always going to line up precisely. They're going to be mm -hmm. off by a few millimeters. So rather than, you know, he'll, he'll scroll... It's weird. God, I should take a video of it sometime for the documentary. It's it's as though you're going through my brain. A camera is yeah. going down like this because you're looking up and down towards my chin, towards my scalp, towards my... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's a crazy 3D effect. Well, good. So your appetite's coming back. And I, have, I have eaten multiple dinners per night the last <laughs> week. I, I'm starving. I'm ravenous. It's, I've compared it to like as though I woke up like a bear in a cave who's been hibernating for six months mm -hmm. and like, oh my God, I'm emaciated. I'm starving. I need to eat. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm, uh, I have a ravenous appetite. Everyone listening to this, should, we should all grub hub to your house at once and pick our favorite <laughs> food. And your challenge is to just mow through as much as possible. I have eaten multiple cheeseburgers and steaks over the last uh, week. Good it's you. also uh, great coming into the holidays because everyone else is trying to watch it, knowing, you know, should they have that second piece of pie or whatever. Um, you got about 25 pounds worth oh, yeah. of leeway. So <laughs> it's going to be hard, hard to get back up to your fighting weight, no matter how hard you try over yeah. this over this holiday. Um, good. But well, I good. feel great. I, I literally feel the best I've felt all calendar year. And uh, I'm excited for, uh, I'm excited. I'm like looking forward to like next year, like, you know, getting back to the gym. God forbid if it opens up, I want to, you know, uh, get be active and do things. I have energy again for the first time in six, 12 months. Good. Thank you for the update. Yeah. 
Um, all right. I was on uh, TMZ this morning or TMZ Live this morning, and um, I pulled a clip. Chris pulled a clip of it, and uh, it's something we talked about. He, they brought up at the end of talking to them about stuff. They brought up uh, the uh, – oh, and uh, get the Mastro's thing ready, too, at some point, or at least the article or something for uh, maybe Dawson to read. Um but they uh, they brought up the Tom Cruise thing, and I got into sort of the joke I got into here on it that we kind of chuckled about. But uh, I'll replay it because they just seem to have a great reaction to this concept. But I was, I was thinking about it more as a concept that made me it made me laugh. So uh, here we go. Well, Tom, Tom Cruise is a super intense guy who probably doesn't blow off steam on a regular basis. So it's like. I'm a pretty intense guy, but I blow off steam on my podcast every single day. Tom probably is a pressure cooker, and at some point it blows. But the thing I thought was interesting about that, because I listened to it in its entirety, it's, it's weird when you get to such a point of power where nobody can talk back and no one can make excuses to your face. So when you go on one of these jags, you just keep going. It's like playing handball against the curtains, like nothing ever comes back. So he ended up repeating himself 17 times because everyone was just dead silent in the room. If you think about <laughs> most arguments, most arguments you get into, you go X, Y, Z, they go PDQ, and then you just go back and forth. <laughs> it's a tennis match. That's, that's why he got very redundant. Uh, look, you got to love the guy's passion. He's probably somewhere doing push-ups right now. And uh, <laughs> I do not I do not fault him for for that sanctimonious speech. I, 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 I can't believe you just said that. I was thinking exactly the same thing because he kept repeating himself. And I don't know if, if, if you sense this, Adam, but I almost felt like he was petering out when he repeated it like the fourth time. It was just like, <laughs> it was like it again. he wanted to say something different. He just couldn't think of it. He's like, I, I'm just going to go back to that same one again. Let's see if I get a reaction. You don't realize like he, when you argue or like, so what Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise had 10 minutes worth of energy and fire in his belly but only 45 seconds worth of idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best description I think I've heard of it. Totally. totally. Perfect. Yeah. I really started thinking about that. And I realized there are so many dads always do that. You know what I mean? They come bursting into the stepdaughter's room and they go, you leave that garage door open again and there's going to be hell to pay. And then the stepdaughter goes, all right, I'll close it okay. next yeah, time. Because, because if you, you leave, you, you, okay, first off, all right. That garage door was open when I pulled up last night. You know, the number one cause for break-ins are people coming in through the garage door and the door to the house was unlocked. So if you're even toying with the idea, don't even entertain the thought of not closing that garage door, stepdaughter. I just, I, just, I got home late and I forgot. I'm okay. When I got home, it was open. Yeah, I forgot to close it. You know what it feels like? First off, I pay the mortgage on this house. I pay the insurance on this house. I pay for the groceries. I pay for that down comforter you have on your bed. And when I come pulling up and I see the garage door open, I'm like, who left this garage door open? And why can't they stop? Yeah, I did it once. It won't happen again. God. Well, you better see to it that it, uh, you better, the the, the garage door is not going to close itself. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's my fault. Okay. It's my fault. I get it. Well, you, you know what? You darn tuned it's your fault. <sighs> sure as hell ain't anyone else's fault. It's not LeBron James's fault. Christian Rinaldi's fault. It's not any. I don't know who they are. I I was watching Sports Center before I came in. Uh, (laughs) All right, it's not it's not the manager of the Mets. Not his fault. It's not uh, bad beats. Um, you know what? 
What? The garage door is closed now. You want to know why? Why? Because I closed the garage door. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're more responsible than me. Okay? I can't be everywhere at once. I can't be at my job and monitoring the garage door. So, it. Um, so, am I making myself clear? Yeah, I get it. I got it 10 minutes ago. God. You, you understand I don't like having these conversations, right? Yeah, I don't either. And you'd think just because it's gone on 20 minutes longer than it <laughs> needed to, I would somehow get some kind of satisfaction out of this? I, I was hoping, yeah. I don't enjoy this. Do you think I get paid to do this? No, do you, I don't think you get paid to do this. Yeah, and it, you know, I'm not trying to win some kind of popularity contest or some sort of freaking uh, Pillsbury Bake Off here. You, you understand I'm in charge of the, the safety of this uh, family? Yeah, I feel like I said thank you and I'm uh, sorry and it won't happen again. You know we're the number one break in. You know you know how they enter? You know how the gangbangers enter the house? You know the number one opening they enter the uh, premises from? The garage. Good guess. Now, don't make me repeat myself. Because uh, I didn't, you know, you think I'm enjoying this? I'm not enjoying this. Okay, it kind of seems like it. Don't you think I want to return to a safe home where the garage door is closed? Yes. Do you have any plans in the future of leaving the garage door open? Yeah, I think I said like Five yeah, times. you said yeah, you do. Could you yeah. inform me of those plans next yes, time? I, so- I I won't do it. It won't happen again. It was a mistake. I'm not doing this for my health. <sighs> yeah, that would be tedious. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. It was trying was trying to internalize it. <laughs> That's why people get more pissed when you give them a quick answer, like, sorry, it won't happen again. I do love it when people still have that momentum. My my yeah. dad used to do that to me growing up, and he would yell at me, walk out of the room, and then come back with like, "Oh, and another thing, uh, and oh, another loaded. thing, loaded." Yeah, that's a mom move in my house. That's the best. Yeah, it's it's, it's ten, over. It's ten not. minutes worth of belly anger, forty five seconds worth of thought, <laughs> and uh, we got to make rock soup out of this. We got to stretch it out. <laughs> I know. In a weird way, there must be some middle ground because shutting people down by saying sorry it's not going to happen again is too fast for the momentum they have they have too much too much momentum heading into that room and because they're looking for a fight unless you're like on your knees groveling do they take it as some sort of a slight you know like um what you think i'm overreacting oh, you know like yeah. they have to take it as some sort of a slight that you said sorry yeah i got it I do like, I also like when they get out of the gate hot, like really hot. But the problem is, is when you go on too long and you get too redundant and nobody answers back to you or challenges you, then at the end, which happened to Cruz, at the end, you start getting into this melancholy mode. You go where, (laughs) look, we're all family. I, I get it. You know, and I'm, and then they, Times are tough for everyone. They hit little, they hit little peaks and valleys. They go, I, I get it. We, we all want the, the same thing. Well, I, I'm in charge. It doesn't get shut down. They go back up for a second, then they start sliding. By the end, they're like, look, I, I, I care, I care about you guys. I want what's, what, what's best. You know, they just start coasting to yep. a stop. And also, they've heard themselves yelling for eight minutes now, and they yeah, realize they everyone thinks they're a douche. All right. Uh, Now on uh, latest on uh, TMZ is now uh, Mastro's in Malibu is uh, defying the lockdown. Oh, Mastro's in Malibu is awesome. And uh, people need their seafood tower and butter cake. Yes, we do. And (laughs) also um, they have this huge outdoor canopy. I mean, they they got a big parking lot out there and they just moved it all outside. And it's a great steak joint. And they got shut down. Think about, I don't know, it's probably not scientific, but outdoor dining in Reseda has got to be a little more dangerous than outdoor dining on the Pacific Coast, mm-hmm. like literally with just the wind just yeah. taking it out to sea. 
But uh, they've just defied it, and, uh, and they embedded my Tin Horn Flats story into their story. But do you have it? Yeah, also. the headline is Mastro's Ocean Club Malibu. Come dine in, folks. Screw Newsom's ban. Adam Carolla has got another option for the next time he wants to stick it to Governor Gavin Newsom by sitting down at an L.A. restaurant to dine in. And this one's got ocean views. Mastro's Ocean Club Malibu, one of L.A.'s biggest celeb hotspots, is still very much open for business, despite L.A. County's ban on indoor and outdoor dining. And it's pretty easy to defy the law and snag a table. A source tells TMZ, Mastro's is still operating as a, quote, underground open with patrons whining and dining underneath a big white tent set up outside the fancy restaurant. Folks hankering to dine out during the pandemic can make reservations by phone. We're told there's no password or anything like that. And there are plenty of reservations available every day this month on Open Table. Password. The video we got was shot Tuesday night inside the makeshift dining room, and it shows all staffers wearing face coverings adhering to the same regulations established when outdoor dining returned earlier this year. As you know, outdoor and indoor dining was suspended in L.A. County and all of SoCal and all of SoCal under Newsom's order at the end of November when ICU capacity at local hospitals dropped below 15 percent. The change has pissed off a lot of people who don't understand what's changed to suddenly make outdoor dining less safe. All right. We we got it. I wonder if there's going to be a little tipping point here, because the the way humans work is <clears throat> The first place to defy the order and open with outdoor dining, that's a tough one. The mm -hmm. second place is a little easier. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to the 10th place, it gets pretty easy. It's game on. Yeah. It's game on. And, uh, you know, look no further than dogs in the airport. <laughs> it started off as a trickle of dogs in the airport. And the more people saw that people were just bringing dogs in the airport, they're like, fuck it, I'm bringing my dog with me too. So I suspect you're going to hear a lot more of these stories. And also <clears throat> Mastro's is in Malibu. It's on PCH. It's, it's one of the most visible restaurants, you know, Tin Horn Flats is sort of in a corner in Burbank yeah. and there's it's not a profile <clears throat> restaurant for sure. Yes. And, and there's celebs. You're, you, the, the Kardashians shall be rolling into that place is what, what I'm saying. So that, could be a high enough profile place that uh, it may be back on with the uh, outdoor dining. So uh, hopefully uh, Drew is uh, I'm looking at Drew through the glass there. Yeah. Sorry, you. Um, <clears throat> I, I wanted to bring something up because I was talking to Drew about it on our podcast uh, earlier today, which is, you know, there's been some controversy. I think I saw punning on TMZ. Uh, sorry, punning on CNN talking about, well, even if you get the vaccine, you still have to wear a mask right. and you still need to limit your travel and stay indoors and all that, even with the vaccine, because the you can still spread the disease. And it didn't sound right. So I talked to Dr. Drew about it. So vaccine update, Drew, for you. And when what it, what about needing to wear a mask or not travel or that kind of stuff once you've been administered the vaccine. I know of no evidence that you can spread the virus if you've had the vaccine. Dr. Bruce just got his first vaccine. I'm very jealous. Mine's up in about two weeks, but Bruce is in. Mm -hmm. um, if it turns out that there's some ability to spread the virus, it seems to me a simple solution would be betadine washes of the uh, or xylitol mouth wash of the nose and mouth, and then that will not happen. So I plan to move about freely once I've been fully vaccinated. Qu quick question about that. What about people who've already had COVID. Right. This is what everybody vaccinated. asked that question. And, and strangely enough, I saw an article just today where a physician was saying, I've had COVID and I plan to get the vaccine. I thought, why? Because the people are, the press has so distorted people's thinking. Here's the reality. There was a study out of uh, San Diego at Scripps at La Jolla that showed the antibodies go up and the antibodies go down. That's with every illness. And left behind is memory B cells and helper and memory T cells, which create an army standing at ready to respond when you're re-exposed to the virus. Every shred of evidence suggests that is adequate immunity should you be re-exposed, certainly for the next year. I'm working with a company called Aditix that we're going to start measuring that function in January and prove once and for all that that cellular immunity persists. Now, will it still be there in a year? 
Not sure. Will we need any booster vaccine? Not sure. But in the short term, seems to me you don't need to be vaccinated if you've had the virus. They were saying, talking about getting Trump revaccinated. And I thought the only the only reason that makes any sense is maybe the Regeneron reduced some of the antibody response, right? Mm. They give them a monoclonal antibody early in the disease. Maybe they don't have as robust an immune response. But I don't know anybody that's proven that. Hold on. Are you a real doctor or just a love doctor? <laughs> <laughs> so who are these dickheads on the news talking about needing to wear a mask I, even after I, you get vaccin- vac- vaccinated or needing to be vaccinated even after you've been exposed? And- bewildering to me. It's, just, it's really kind of bewildering. Now, there's or, a is little- it bewildering or are they just going to keep the fucking gravy train rolling? Dude, it is terrifying, horrifying, cataclysmic, catastrophic, grim, and staggering. That's right. <laughs> All right. It, it, Those it, are the but, new words you can't say. It's the scary. Except they've been said every GD day <laughs> since yeah. last February. But these are fucking physicians they're having on there. How- I, I, I understand there's a little bit of, we need to kind of work out some stuff. We don't know with certainty. But whenever there is uncertainty, they go full scale in this one direction. Right. What I <clears throat> object to is when the people in power go... Well, there's no evidence or data that suggests outdoor dining is dangerous, but we want people to stay home. So we're just going to do what we want to do. And there may be no evidence that suggests you can spread the disease after you've been vaccinated, but we know better than the people do. So we're going to have mask up anyway. And 50,000 people die of secondhand smoke every year because... Hey, man, get some body bags out for California. We need body bags. Didn't you hear the governor? Yeah. 750 die every year, every day. 750 people die routinely in California. But now we need to get more body bags. Well, the 8,000 people have died in Los Angeles County because of this disease are never coming back. (laughs) Barbara informed us that they're (laughs) not coming back. Do we need that kind of commentary from the experts? Isn't that more shit for uh, your mom after she's had a couple mimosas? Or do we need the people that... Is she wrong, Adam? Is she wrong? (laughs) I have one question. The tip of the spear. Uh, We need the folks that are are giving us the information. Do we need that kind of sidebar commentary? Of course. What would we do without it? (laughs) She broke down and started crying the other day. You didn't believe me. I had to play Uh, it for you. No, I did not believe that she she was fucking falling apart up there. Uh, by the way, I love the steady hand of a crazy witch who's bawling and telling us uh, folks are never coming back. That's just what we need. That's just what a town the size of Los Angeles and, and needs. Listen, a just, fucking frail nut job who's bawling up there. Imagine me doing that just at the head of a bed when I'm taking care of an ICU patient. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Find that. It made me fucking laugh. It's not. It's go. not. All right. She's nuts. Fine. I'm not I'm not faulting her from for crying. I'm faulting us for making her the spokesperson for this. You don't want your people who are uh, heading up the infectious disease stuff actually breaking down and talking about people souls never coming back. Anyway, so uh maybe uh after Mastros and uh, Tin Horn Flats, I, I we'll see. We'll monitor the uh, the situation. But I, I will bet you that there are uh, going to be more more restaurants that uh, defy the order. And uh, my guess, my guess yeah. is that if we know of these two, that there's got to be any number of dozen or more, you know, just kind of doing it. We don't even know about. Probably the first one would definitely get a little a little notoriety Mastro's would get it because they're Mastro's. And then after that, we shall, uh, we shall see. I, by the way, had Megan at the other shop. I said, uh, call Mastro's and tell him the guy who's embedded in your TMZ piece <laughs> wants to come by for a little skirt steak. So we'll see yeah. if we can work that out. Uh, Max Pat will find that clip. Gary had it yeah, earlier. It First, up. I'll tell you about, uh, oh, sorry, I got the wrong copy here. Simply Safe. That's what I want to say. Simply Safe wants you to keep your family and your home safe from break ins, fire, floods. Don't leave that garage door open. Medical emergencies and more. Simply Safe Home Security award winning 24 7 protection. Not only an arsenal of cameras and sensors, you get the best professional monitors in the business. They've got your back day and night, ready to send police, fire, EMTs. These guys have been sponsors here for years. They make a great product. 
It's up and running in about 30 minutes. You go online, you order what you need, you get it custom for your home, and then uh, Simply Safe's professionals take over, monitoring your home 24 7, ready to send help at a moment's notice. As soon as they hear that alarm, they're on the spot. No, uh, no long-term contract, no hidden fees, no installation costs. Right now, our listeners get a free security camera with the purchase of Simply Safe. SimplySafe.com slash Adam. 60-day risk-free trial. Visit SimplySafe.com slash Adam. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's hear her. The frightening visual of our reality. The more terrible truth is that over 8,000 people Sorry. Oh, over 8,000 people who were beloved members of their families are not coming back. And their deaths are an incalculable loss to their friends and their family, as well as our community. So I would argue um, discussing what people meant to their family doesn't really have a lot to do with COVID updates. Just give us some numbers. Tell us what to do. And uh, most of us will do it. Yes, Gina. I have a conspiracy theory. Hmm. This is only based on just seeing her multiple times in the past. She does come across as fairly cold and not just physically, like she's always freezing like Chihuahua, but she's just a cold person <laughs> and, um, you know, just gives the, the stats <clears throat> and then says, I don't answer to you. I only answer to so-and-so. Do you think it was suggested to her mm. that she show more emotion? Like a, a PR move. Yes. I do not know. I, I normally don't have any of those kind of conspiracy theories, but who knows? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Not a bad theory. I just, uh, my feeling is, is we need to get a little back into the numbers and the data and the science and a little off the, you know, when you hear Cuomo saying, uh, if one, you know, if he saves one person, then he's done his job. Like that kind of talk is not good for people making policy. It just, it just isn't. It's kind of the opposite of policy. One person is going to die. A thousand people are going to die. Many people shall die. Now we have to balance that against the economy or kids uh, staying at home and being uh, beaten by their alcoholic stepdad and all the other sort of negative unintended consequences that come from this, from these policies. All right. Uh, let's see. Michael Costa, comedian, is uh, going to join us. We'll take a, a quick break and we'll zoom him in right after this. All right. He should sign, be signing on any second now. All right. We'll play the game with him. Yeah, I'll play the game. <laughs> we'll bump in with a clip and the clip is the reason why I thought we should play the game with him. He knows it was two thirty-five, <clears throat> so we'll probably sound around the dot. He came. He came in early to do a sound check, and yeah, oh, yeah. He's, he seemed diligent. Well, we can just roll in, and then he'll join us when he joins us. Okay, you want to bring him? Well, in we're using. We're oh using yeah, we're bumping. We're him. bumping in with him. Yeah, I know. Okay, we'll still do it. Okay, here we go. I'm always wet every day in New York, somehow. Summer, it's humid, I'm walking ass wet, armpits wet. Random air conditioners dripping on you. Was that an air conditioner? I don't know, keep going. Wet, wet, wet. Fall, I put a jacket on, then the sun comes out. Neck wet, head wet, backpack wet. I'm always wet. <laughs> Living in New York is like being Leonardo DiCaprio in every single one of his movies. Let's go through them. What do you want to start with? Titanic drowns to death. Wet. Great Gatsby dies in the pool at the end. Wet. Shutter Island, it's an island. Wet. The beach? Wet. Give me some. Give me some Leonardo movies. Give me some. Inception, first dream, pouring rain. Wet. Gangs in New York. He's in the whorehouse, sweating the whole time. Wet. Gilbert Grape takes a bath in the second act. Wet. Give me some more. Departed, movie theater scene, wearing a hat, starts raining on him. Wet. Revenant, starts in a fucking river. Wet. Great Gatsby, I already said it was the second example. What's wrong with this audience? He dies in the pool at the end. Pay attention. Wet. 
Blood Diamond runs into a river shooting a machine gun. Wet. Aviator crashes into the ocean. Wet. Basketball Diaries, top of the building, jerking off, starts raining on him. Wet. He's always wet. He Michael is always Costa wet. is on the Adam Carolla Show. Good to see you again, Michael. What a what a way to come in. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. I do a DiCaprio wet bit in my set as well, but it's different. It's different <laughs> oh, enough. Oh, shoot. Uh, it's different okay. enough that I don't think it's going to okay. be a problem. So you were, wa- you were li- watching and listening to that with much different once you hear another comic go down a path of a joke you have it's just it's just you start to boil with anger so you, like if it gets close to me i'm gonna freak out well what i what i was thinking about is i think i could switch to a shia labeouf dry bit that okay. i've been working on too <laughs> so i think there's room enough for both of us on stage that's what i'm saying so you have you also recognize that he's always wet for many many years you've you've realized this well it's a great it's a, it's a, I don't know, I've, I, I've never thought about it until uh, a minute and 40 seconds ago, but it's, it <laughs> right. is a good, <clears throat> it, it's, it's how comedy is supposed to work because you bring up a concept and people go, huh? Like, I've never thought about that. No one has ever thought about that. You know, you can't go, oh, Asians are such slow drivers. I was like, yeah, all right, jack off. But you go, <laughs> DiCaprio wet and you go, what? And what? then you prove it. And that's uh, that's the genius of a, a good bit. So it's a great bit. Where would you have gone if someone said Wolf of Wall Street? Is it he's wet. He, he slips in the pool. Oh, okay. oh yeah. I was going to say he gets champagne sprayed on him. <laughs> yeah. People love to come up after I do that bit and go, what about bl- Body of Lies? And it's always like, he's fucking wet. He's sweating the whole time. But what? And it's like they want the joke to keep going. But also, and I'm sure all of you know this, I get into the next joke pretty quick because I don't want that joke to linger too long yeah, because yeah. there's someone who's going to yell out revolutionary road and then I'm screwed. Yeah. You know? You've only done so much research. I yeah. would say even when he's not on a film set and he pops up on TMZ, the only <laughs> time I ever see him is walking on the beach with Toby Maguire. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. He, he is always wet. And I, I wonder when I see him in these films, I mean, these are HD cameras. He's wearing makeup for sure. So like, what a pain in the ass to have him in your movie. It's like, he's got to keep reapplying the makeup. I don't know how they, you know, but Adam, speaking mm. of the joke where people go like, oh no, what's he, what's he talking about? Your joke. And I saw you whenever we were allowed to see people at this comedy store a long time ago. And you were, you started the bit about the, the, the DC sniper. Right. I don't know if you remember this, but yes. and I'm listening to it and I'm going, how is he going to make this a joke? Stop, Adam. I'm like, literally like, don't do that. And it made me laugh so hard. And I think about it all the time because it's about your son saying, why did he shoot those people? And then it's something like you said, well, he, you know, if little boys don't clean their rooms or something it was like a, that. It was that a, it? Yeah, it was a totally. I'm, parap- I'm, I'm, I'm butchering it. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. I love butchers. <laughs> uh, I. No, it was a completely organic thing that happened when I was sitting in on Howard Stern's show that I okay. never even thought about working into a stand-up routine. Because sometimes when you say stuff that's real or actually happened, it doesn't land into your category of choices for stand-up. You're like, I have to sit around and think of a joke or a concept or a premise. But just uh, to paraphrase myself... It, whatever year it was, it was just me, Robin, and Howard, and, and Robin was doing the news, and she was doing the story of the D.C. sniper, and her thing was they're shooting people at bus stops, they're shooting them at gas stations, they're shooting while they're driving their cars. Everyone is completely and utterly freaked out. And then yes. she said, Howard, what do we tell the children? And I said, tell them he only shoots <laughs> kids that don't clean their room. <laughs> that's what it was. That's right. and that's much better than my paraphrase. But that that the, oh man, I think of that sometimes. That joke is it just is so funny to me, and also something my father would say. So it's like it makes me think. I don't know. It just it hit me on a on a visceral level. <laughs> well, and we're only going to do another twenty minutes on me and my comedy, but <laughs> sure. It, you know, it it's like jokes have to kind of make sense. Like you go. You get a clean room. Your kid doesn't have to run serpentine to the fifth grade. It's win-win. Totally. Uh, 
Uh, so the stand-up so, special, by the way, Detroit, New York, L.A., was shot in Detroit, L- uh, New York, and L.A. It's available now on Comedy Central. Dot com is a very funny special and uh, people need to Thank laugh you. about now. And um, it's uh, yeah. So you can get on comedy com. When did you shoot it? I shot it before the pandemic. So about a year ago. So there is some, uh, there is some feeling that you're watching a different generation, even mm-hmm. though it was <laughs> 11 months ago, 10 months ago. Um, there's big crowds, you know, but also what's fun and unexpected about it was I wanted to take the viewers on a trip through three different comedy rooms. I wanted to really show viewers what comics perform in different rooms. And it's not always a theater with a, with nine cameras and great audio and lights. So now when you watch it, going through what we went through, it it is kind of fun to travel because I don't know, I haven't been anywhere. And so people are messaging me saying, hey, I really liked your special because I got to actually go different places. So there we go, win, win for that. And it wasn't the plan at all. You know, I wonder, <clears throat> sorry, with the pandemic and just entertainment in general, like we all remember Eddie Murphy stand-up specials and Richard Pryor and all, we all grew up with that stuff. But I feel like now maybe Chappelle's doing, was doing a lot of this and still is, but- <laughs> I don't think feel there's any rules anymore for stand-up specials. You can shoot in a small like it used to be. We got to get a big theater and we got to light the shit out of it. And we got to mm-hmm. have the guy's initials in the background and ten foot letters, you know. And now it's just like I don't even know if people want that anymore. I think they want things a little raw and a little sort of intimate, uh, not overly produced. Yes. Well, the, I was seeing so many specials. And I remember screaming at the TV a few times going, what is special about this? What, what about this comics performance is special? What about this scene is special? And I, and you know, you mentioned those previous, those felt special to me. I was excited to see those. So I wanted to try something that felt special besides just a man or woman on, on a stage talking for an hour. Um, Comedy Central was open to the idea. They said, this is the money for your special. If you want to shoot it in 12 places, that's fine. But when you go to the 12th place, you're going to have eight, $8 left. Right. Um, you know, but it was fun. It was three times the amount of work because we went to three different places. That I regret. Um, but, you know, we go from the big, fun, special theater to literally me on a bike in the freezing cold in Manhattan going to an intimate basement damp comedy club and i think so many comedy viewers think i I don't know they just don't understand how difficult it is and how each night you're going to such different venues with such different people and the hollywood improv is great but they're all dumb in the audience or they don't laugh but that's so different than the night before where you were in manhattan which was the night before when you're at a big theater in detroit and we have to make you laugh at least try to make you laugh no matter what the situation? Yeah, it strikes me that the Hollywood Improv may be one of the most touristy stand-up places ever, which is not really, you know, bachelorette parties celebrating, yeah. you know, and things like that. It is very touristy, even more touristy, I would say, than the comedy store. Does that sound accurate to you? Yeah, the, the the store, I mean, I got past in the store in 2008 and there was three people in the audience most of the night. And it just reminded me of a gym. It reminded me of grit and, and raw and you know more New York. And then it kind of, since then, um, it just now, it, you know, fuck, I don't know what's going on now, but uh, it was just popped popped off all the time. The improv, they had a weird run there where they switched to like a barbecue restaurant. And mm-hmm. I was going, uh oh, in LA, you're going to switch to barbecue. Uh, so it's taken on some different faces. Um, but I always find in the Hollywood improv, it's just a bunch of agents nodding, going, <laughs> that's funny, but no one's actually laughing. Yeah, it is a mm, tougher crowd fun. there. And then there's Laugh Factory and, and, and Ice House and every place. Is, it's kind of interesting, although. I guess the way we would want it, that every club kind of has its own personality, which is a, it's an interesting sociological thing. You know, they're separated by a couple of miles, sometimes a couple of blocks. And yet the 
place, like almost physically, takes on a personality. It's interesting. Abs- yeah, yeah, absolutely. And depending on how they like you, your own comfort level is different. I mean, at the store, I feel like it's home. You know, I got a parking space, come on in. And then I get to the Hollywood Improv and I'm always like dreading the parking. How do I even do, am I allowed to valet? They told me I could, but then the guy's always mad at me. You know, it just, we're literally, like you said, half a mile away. And I just went from totally comfortable and confident in performing to like, how do I even get there? Oh my God, you know, so I'm that's our job. You park over in like the Fred Siegel parking lot (laughs) and you walk across the street, but I'm, I'm totally convinced that the guy who's out there with the windbreaker has nothing to do with the improv or parking in general. Like I'm going to tell my son, look, if shit doesn't work out or you get strung out on fentanyl, just buy yourself a yellow windbreaker and just stand in parking lots in Hollywood on Saturday nights. And then when people park, you go, where are you heading? Yeah. And they go, I'm going across the street to the old spaghetti factory. Okay. When are you going to be back? (laughs) about an hour, two hours. And then that guy will always tip you when they come back. Cause you just, yeah. be, you're just standing there. Yep. Isn't there always a story every year in LA around <laughs> the holidays of some guy who just bought a podium and just started stealing people's cars. Yes. It's good. Yeah, get a La Brea, go, go on La Brea, put up a podium and, and like put the vest on and you could just take everyone's car. Everyone just gives you keys all around. I love that. Oh, when we were down in uh, San Francisco or up in San Francisco at the, at the Fisherman's Wharf. Chris, remember we saw a poster? They literally took a poster of a guy and put him up in the parking lot by the wharf, and they're like, do not give this guy money. That's great. This guy, just because he's wearing a bow tie and a Nehru jacket, does not mean he has anything to do with the parking in this in this facility. What was that? You remember that? Yeah, I'm seeing if I can, I can pull it up here. Well, let me ask you this. If you're that guy's mom, proud of the poster upset over the poster i think i could make an argument for proud of the poster he's a young entrepreneur yeah absolutely yeah big cold hard cash the uh the uh you do a bit by the way the uh oh you got a (laughs) oh my god (laughs) oh yeah right what's that post what's that post (laughs) does not pay this individual (laughs) (laughs) by the way uh being called an individual is almost as bad as being called a gentleman. Like, well, the two gentlemen en- entered the senior's home. They they raped Millie. Then the gentleman uh, pistol whipped her. And then the one gentleman left from the window. Like, <laughs> Not gentlemanly at all. That's right. That By the way, that's a, that's a nice... That's a that's a eight hundred dollar sign. I mean, they mounted mm. that. They put some some cement in there. Oh uh, yeah, that, no, you yeah. Well, first off, you're going San Francisco. You're going by the bay, and uh, you're going in Fisherman's Wharf. That shit's got to be laminated. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you can't just you can't just take a refrigerator box and a sharpie. That's not gonna. No. That shit's gonna fall apart first time seagull shit hits it. Yeah. Wh- what does the sign say? Sorry, Max. I can't. It says, do not pay this individual. Pay machine at all times. You know, it'd be funny is if. Other guys started getting in on the act, and eventually there were just tons of signs with different people <laughs> on it. It's like a Brady Bunch mosaic. Yeah, like well, kind of like the crowd in a ball game now with COVID. Oh, right. Just cuts. people's heads up yeah. there, you know. And then people, I guess, would start complaining, like, oh, you used a shot of me when I was heavier. Why don't you get a modern <laughs> shot of me? <laughs> you got a bit about Tom Cruise running? Because I was just talking about Tom Cruise. Well, yeah, and you know, I, I I watched I watched your clip on his uh, on listening to him yesterday, which is great because he it was you were so right about that where you said you know do you got you get to this level of celebrity where no one can disagree with you, and so he's saying <laughs> it was very funny that everyone's saying yes sir yes sir to him. I, I don't think I can refute anything he's actually saying. I actually no. love that he's passionate about this. And I love, I, I think it always sucks that someone's recording and then immediately uploading. Like what a fucking snitch, you know? Does anything does anything just privately happen anymore? Mm-hmm. But I finished the, the Leo bit by saying, Tom Cruise is always running. And what I should have done is then gone through all of his movies where he's running, but I did not do that. And I had to tape the special and I decided to just stop that joke there. But 
Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a Tom Cruise movie where he hasn't run. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. I don't think it exists. He does a little a little sliding on occasion, mm-hmm. but almost yeah. yes. almost always exclusive running. All right, uh we He's got an excellent runner. Well, you know, he has short appendages. Yes. Compact. Right. And so when you're built like uh Daniel Stern, I'm trying to think of some <laughs> <laughs> lanky, lanky fella. No, stop there. You hit Peter. Daniel, Daniel Stern yeah. looks super goofy. I've never even seen him run, but I can see it in my head. It's a fucking abortion, right? <laughs> <laughs> Arms and legs everywhere. Tom like Cruise is just a little small displacement engine with those pistons just popping, right? Yeah, and there's a reason Vince Vaughn's not always running. It just no. w- it would look terrible on, on screen. That's right. Yeah, anyone over 6'2", no, no can do with the running, but the little guys. Um, all right, so we're going to play the uh, Sling It Forward game. And, uh, Michael, I don't know if you know how to play this, but, uh, well, Dawson will explain it, and then you can play along. All right, so essentially I will be reading descriptions of movies from the Sling TV app. As soon as you think you can identify the movie, buzz in with your name. If you guess it, you get a point. If you're incorrect, I will continue with the description. Sling TV has the best TV shows, movies, and shows uh, all great uh, viewing options with Sling TV. So uh, let's play the game, Dawson. It's time to play Sling It Forward, the game that's suspiciously familiar. Brought to you by Sling TV. And Michael, I'm going with the name Pete because Adam is too soft and I don't feel like it doesn't cut through the fog. Okay. I guess I'll go with Michael. I think I was going to go with Pete as well, but I'll stick oh. with Michael. Oh, this no, is I'm awkward. just kidding. I'll go with Michael. <laughs> the story of a team of female African American mathematicians. Pete. Gina. I heard Pete. We're not going through this again, are we? Fucking numbers or whatever. Brian. Goddamn. Yeah. Brian. Hidden figures. Oh, From 2016, figures. it is hidden figures. Mm. Michael, please know with the slight delay that Adam will always answer first. <laughs> yeah, I'm but, glad I didn't but, say, I was about to say a league of their own, but then African American uh-huh. threw me off. Yeah. An ex-hitman comes out of retirement to track down the gangsters. Brian. Brian. Oh, this is a movie I did not like. God damn it. It's the fucking Denzel Washington movie called the. I'm gonna get it wrong. The the, the, the it's like the Equalizer, the Enforcer, or some bullshit. Oh, I forgot. I, I punt. long title. That killed his dog, Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh. It, what you were going for was the Equalizer. What I'm going for is John Wick yes. from 2014. Wow. It is John Wick. Mm-hmm. Come on, Sling TV. <laughs> After being coerced into working for a crime boss. A young getaway driver. Pete. Pete. Oh. Drive? Brian. Shit. Brian. Baby driver. Ba- uh, Adam. <laughs> Come on. Brian gets it. Baby what are the rules driver. of this game? Oh, I should get a half point. After his auto parts tycoon father. Pete. Gina. Pete. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay. Man. All right. All right. Gina. Uh, no, no. I got it. Uh, Danny boy. He's got time. No, Gina. 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 Tommy Boy. Tommy from 1995. Boy. God damn it, I'm sick of that stupid song. Callahan. Uh, also, movie. Michael, first of five wins. Oh, great. Okay. A team of explorers travel through a wormhole in space. Gina. 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 Interstellar. From 2014, Interstellar. Wow. Oh, look at you. I didn't see this one. It's great. A lot going on. It. A security expert must infiltrate... A burning skyscraper. Pete. Pete. Skyscraper. From 2018. Yeah. Skyscraper. Just right there. The, the rock, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. He's going in. You know why? Because his uh, wife and kids were in that building. Oh, sure. Mm. Mm-hmm. I picked the wrong year to give up movies. <laughs> <laughs> Two New Yorkers accused of murder. In rural Alabama. Brian. Brian. Oh, this is a delightful movie, My Cousin Vinny. From 1992. Oh, wow. oh they were mm-hmm. accused of murder? Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't do it. Spoiler alert. I never got that part of it. When aliens. Michael. Michael. Alien. Misinterpret video feeds of classic arcade games. Brian. Brian. This is a terrible movie that I did not see uh, called Pixels. From 2015. Wow. Oh, yeah. Brian's knocking on the door with four. Mm. In Nazi-occupied France during World War II, a plan to assassinate Nazi leaders. Pete. Gina. Pete. Um, God. Valkyrie. By a group. Oh, Gina. God Gina. damn it. Gina. Gina. Inglorious Bastards. From 2009. Oh, fuck. Gina at three. They were very similar, those movies. I was so cruised up, man. (laughs) (laughs) I've never felt sure of anything in my fucking life for (laughs) 1.7 seconds. Set in the near future, technology controls nearly all aspects of life. But when the world of this self-labeled technophobe is turned upside down. Pete. Pete. Navigating. I just thought I'd make up a movie title and see if it worked. Am I right or not? Is that it? His only hope for revenge is an experimental computer chip implant. Oh, Brian. Oh, this is a great movie. Adam, you would like this. Uh, this is Upgrade. For the win from 2018, oh, wow. it is yeah, great. Up. That's a solid movie, and Adam, you were digging. So, Wait, you isn't, isn't Upgrade married to Cardi B? <laughs> <laughs> Sling It yeah. Forward, brought to you by Sling TV. Yep, make the smart choice with Sling TV. Get the best cable for the best price. It's easy to switch and save, and you can learn more at Sling. Dot, sorry, Sling.com slash Adam. All right, uh, we got the news. We got uh, Michael hanging out and uh, bald as well. So uh, why don't we take a quick break? We'll come back and do the news with Gina and company right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gina Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gina Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdowns. Give news with Gina Gina Grad. The news with Gina Grad. I don't well, want to say no. I got a symbolic victory in that game, mm. but if you take my two half answers, Danny Boy, and then uh, the other one, and combine them, and then you take the movie which should have been Valkyrie, and you count that, well, and I then in first place, and then you picture a world where there was a movie starring mm-hmm. Bruce Willis called yeah. Navigating. You mm, combine that. You're shooing. I got I got the win easily. And uh, later on in the week, I'm going to uh, release the Kraken, and you guys have all the information you need. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Well, starting off with some hot, piping hot Tom Cruise news. Ooh. After his uh, tongue lashing the other day, five crew members have walked off the set. Whoa. So this still than, going? Yeah, t- uh, rather than take the abuse from Tom, they took an early Christmas break. And uh, in Tom's immortal words, they're freaking gone because that's what he uh, threatened everybody with. A source on the set said tension had been running high anyway. Then crews erupted with anger under the stress to, to finish Mission Impossible 7 under strict regulations. And more importantly, before Christmas Eve, the insider claims since Tom's outburst became public, there's been more anger. He's upset others aren't taking it as seriously as him. Three months ago, Cruz reportedly uh, chartered that docked ship so the movie, uh, the, so the crew could isolate. So he's going, you know, above and beyond, and he wants his movie done. Couple thoughts. Tom Cruise must like tell stories where he's like, "I was uh, in my hotel room the other night, getting ready to run to my bed." <laughs> And I had this thought. Also, tongue lashing is one of those things that definitely sounds better than it is, mm-hmm. you know? Because yes. if, if you found out that uh, Elle McPherson was going to give you a tongue lashing, you'd be like, sign me Sweet. up yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know what it Good was. Line. And then also, isn't this guy a Scientologist? I mean, isn't that, mm-hmm. 
Isn't that supposed to kind of smooth you out a little, kind of, you know, even you out, take some of the edges off? Think we'd be without it. Think we'd be without it. Oh, that's a good. Oh, boy. That's a good point. Well, I don't know if you've seen all of the Leah Remini TV shows that I have um, or all the documentaries, but uh, the guy at the top gets a little handsy with people sometimes when he's angry. Miscavige. David Miscavige. Uh, So there might be some light, uh, you know, some dusting of abuse, you know. They ever but find who's to say? That, does that guy's that guy's wife go missing? Shelly is missing. The um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. S- I don't think she's been <laughs> seen in many years. She they there is there is whispered uh, hush talk that she is in that like uh, you know uh, that like tunnel oh. prison in Hemet that they have. They have a compound and like yeah, you know, in Hemet. Oh, in Hemet. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Who's to say? Not us. Uh, so vaccine news, Mike Pence is scheduled to get the vaccine um, now as, as you're hearing this. But guess who beat him to the punch? Sir Ian McKellen. He got the vaccine. He's 81 years old and he was eligible to receive the first wave of vaccines. And he didn't hesitate. I think we have a picture of that. He says anyone who has lived as long as I have uh, because they've uh, has lived lived as long as I have and is alive because they have had previous vaccinations, I would encourage everybody to do the sensible thing, not just for themselves, but for everybody else, because if you're virus free, that helps everybody else, doesn't it? So he's on board. Pence is on board. Adam Carroll is on board. Yeah, and- everyone I know is on board. Uh, also, I think the lady from the great British Bake Off, at least I saw on TMZ last night. All the greats. Got it as well. So when we're getting into, you know, deep cable and baking shows, uh, we're we're in pretty good pandemic shape. That's the way I I look at it. Well, not everybody wants to wear a mask on a plane. Not everybody can wear a mask on a plane, or so they claim. And so a Russian airline is making special um, accommodations for them. So it's Aeroflot. Russia's flagship airline, they announced this week that passengers who refuse to wear a mask on board will be seated in a designated maskless area of the plane. So you're not going to get denied boarding. You're basically just going to be sitting in the last two rows. There's no uh, information about if there's anything separating those people from the rest of the passengers, but that is the way they're going to handle this. You just sit in the back, what, like like the smoking section. What I've learned from flying commercial is even if they did put a division between the two areas, somebody would leave their area to take a shit in my area. That's what I've <laughs> learned from flying first class over the years. Right. You cannot tell them that bathroom is not theirs. It's, you know, the one that they bought a ticket for is 86 feet behind them and has three people in it. And the one in first class is 12 foot forward and is empty. They're doing it there. So whatever divider you put up in an airplane, people will just go right the fuck through it and take a shit. That much I know. That's true. Well, that's why the smart money is on the uh, flight attendants in Asia who've been encouraged to wear adult diapers. You want to talk about like Mm. short straw in the stewardess department? You know, the aforementioned uh, DiCaprio's private jet has got to be the best gig ever sure. in terms of the, the flight attendant. The Russian airline maskless <laughs> section is got <laughs> there, there could be no lower draw than that when it comes to being a flight attendant. Right. Yeah, that's the, that's yeah, the nuts that's worst. Aren't, aren't adult diapers meant for people who have you know, leaking problems. It's, they're not meant for you just to let it all go for full release. Yeah. It's, it's like, Oh, when I sit down, you know, this happens. I I think there overall, we need to reeducate people that adult diapers aren't just so you can shit your pants whenever you want. (laughs) That's a very good point. Well, they're for incontinence. Yeah. Yeah. They were designed for one thing. Well, they, I, but I think it's it, like the, I, I see the commercials. The chicks are in the park doing yoga, and there's no way she went to the park to piss herself. Exactly. I mean, it's she had it's a, accidental. Yeah. Yeah. She had a hysterectomy nine months yes. ago, and she's a little yes. worried about the instructor when she gets into the down dog, right? Yeah. Oh. So this Asian airline is just part of employment is that you have to be comfortable and able. By the I, way, if, yeah, if you gave me $1,000, I'm not sure I could just 
go. Right. Fully well, this clothed. Was, this was the suggestion of the um, the the flight administration. Right. But the for just, hey, this is something that, because we don't want you going in and out of those uh, ransacked, um, you know, disease filled bathrooms. Right. This, but feel this, free to, you know, shuffle around sure. paying customers with, with a load with a load. This uh, is the second time this week that adult diapers has come up in a mm-hmm. involved discussion on this show. Well, and I um, didn't mean to kind of make this be the one to talk about, but I just think there's a misconception that adults just want to like crap themselves. By the way, point. I once had to roast t- Tony Siragusa, that old. Baltimore comic. Ravens tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, of course. Yeah, I was going to say. Of course, but he he was the spokesman for it Depends was. Adult That's Diapers right. for a while. And I remember when we roasted him, his people were like, "Hey, just do us a favor and don't talk about the Depends <laughs> thing." And I'm like, "That is the biggest. That's it. That's the one thing we can't talk about." That is that would be at the top of everyone's every comic leaderboard if you're roasting <laughs> someone. To talk oh, about there uh, it is. depends. <laughs> Tony said, but I don't think he was just unloading in his pants. I think what my guess would be that because of years of difficult tackling, mm-hmm. every once in a while some some slippage comes out. I don't know why I got all pumped up about this uh, this news topic. You're passionate. Well, passionate I've about see, the topic. I see more and more adult diaper commercials as I get older. It could be I'm watching too much Fox as well. I don't know yet. <laughs> maybe but, yeah. maybe if I watch a little Nickelodeon, I'd probably yeah. see less. It Slightly hasn't been less. proven, but I'm going to test it out over the weekend. But I, the other one I would see was the commercial for the medication for, that uh, you needed to take because you took too many painkillers and you can't take a shit. Oh, now you got yeah. poop, oh, yeah. And I envision an America five years from now where half the population is wearing a diaper mm. and the other is on so many painkillers <laughs> that they haven't shit in three weeks. Dude, you, th- th- that's that's possible, by the way, because that balance, because so chemotherapy does the same thing as uh, the painkillers. It stops you up and you got to balance that out with like, you know, Ducalax and all the, sh- just all the shit, no pun intended. It's called that's Ducalax. A, that's a delicate balance how much of that to take it's a real trial and error when i say error that's where <laughs> yeah. the diapers come in yeah. your, your singularity is not that far away yeah well we just divide america into two groups the diaper right. wearers and the ones that couldn't shit no matter how many diapers they had on oh, mm-hmm. oh uh I, michael yeah. in terms of uh comedy themes uh mm-hmm. i had the idea the other day which was you know kids diapers and I have a 14 year old twin, so I recall this period. The you know the girls have the Disney princesses on them, and the guys uh, the guys diapers have the cars, the Pixar cars, cars on there, or you know Power Rangers or whatever the hell it is. And it's it's kind of festive and it's kind of cool. Um, I was thinking like, why don't adult diapers have yeah. themes? You know, why can't yeah. we put stuff on the adult fighting diaper. irish diaper yeah you got a team maybe you love margaret thatcher you, you know yep. what i mean like why can't they represent yeah and and certainly the adult diaper industry wants big diaper. us big diaper wants well especially after siragusa uses it but right. but Biggest. they they want us to feel more comfortable with this you know, they're really trying to downplay this being a big event. Hey, it's all good. You can do yoga in the park, even though we can all see the diaper outline in that commercial. Your visible diaper line. I'm so no I would I'm no yeah. diaper technician, but is there such a thing as a thong diaper, Gina? <laughs> really um, defeat the purpose. There should be. <laughs> there should definitely be like a PGA sponsorship, like your favorite golfer, you know, how many, or your your least favorite, (laughs) right? Excuse me. Excuse me. Your least favorite golfer. Uh, for, for sure. Fuzzy Zeller for me, um, (laughs) is how many celebrities and sports icons passed on the diaper before they got to Saragusa? You know, they had to start with Tom Brady yeah, and then uh, well, what's Bob Greasy up to or something? Like, yeah, it's well, certain- every retired, yeah, nameth Greasy. All it, it had to be a hard, it had to be a hard no from all their all their people. You don't just start with Saragossa. Bad news, no, Tom. Uh, the- Zonka yeah. said no. <laughs> that's right. But that's a big payday, right, Adam? You don't you have to. Be. You don't say yes to that unless it is a you know big payday. Uh, speaking of a big payday. 
They need something to represent the shit because all those tampon and maxi pad commercials, they got the blue dye. Blue and purple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. How yeah. come no such luck with the diapers? Where's our representation? That's right. And I argue a big payday would do it nicely. There- there is there is a device. Thanks, Gina. So it took I, a minute. Are, is, are people not getting payday. that joke? <laughs> payday the candy bar. Sorry. Yeah. A it. big payday. There is some device that that some click hole I went down. It's like a portable bidet. Yeah. And it was it was um it's certainly for like city folk. Anyone who's lived in New York knows there are days when you just you leave the house and like you cannot find a bathroom yeah. that you can use all day. So you just have to like whatever. But to and to refer to what you were just saying, Adam, something has to, you know the blue dye equivalent to crap. They used hummus on like a <laughs> on a glass pane, and they kind of showed you the. But I thought that was actually quite tasteful. Pardon the the pun of uh, you, but because you have to do something to reference crap. Wow, they used hummus. Wow. Did so they, I, you know, did they say it was hummus or did is they that visibly something you open the, the Sabra? It container? showed the glass pane with hummus on, and then it kind of showed you the 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 power of the bidet. And uh, I watched this commercial way too long, so yeah, excuse huh. me for for butting in with this. All right. I was going to go horrible. to Zanku for lunch, but scrub that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they had the, the, was it called the Stadium Pal or the Stadium Buddy, which is like an external catheter oh, that yeah. you tape onto your penis and then strap it to yeah. your leg. So you just have hot pee just, next to your shin well, for the whole game. Yeah. Chris, Loxamana, back me up. Any serious gambler has given consideration to the adult diaper. Like anyone who's <laughs> doing a session at the You're on a hot table. streak. Yeah, I'm not leaving oh, yeah. that craft table. Crap. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's the okay. the famous NASA astronaut, that woman, right? She wore the we diaper. We talked about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. To go on her. Apparently, country. I was mistaken. She was uh, uh, going to, um, she was going to give her guy a tongue lashing right. for sleeping with somebody else. She wasn't the the mm. um, one committing the infidelity. No, she, she was, was going, going to give to... A, bullet, a bullet lashing, I thought. Yeah, that too. Well, hell hath no fury like a woman with a full diaper who's <laughs> traveled through nine times. counties to get to you. <laughs> yeah, so there her... was a device called the Sneaky Leaker, and it was that catheter thing as well. And it was Sounds sold like a in, wrestler. Yeah, and it was sold in <laughs> New Orleans during Mardi Gras Mart. because you'd be trapped in these parades but my brother always liked to call it the leaky sneaker instead, <laughs> which I thought was just a great brother joke. I saw the commercial. They would use Baba Ganoush to <laughs> represent the... <laughs> Dawson? Since we're still on this, I knew a guy in college who went to Chico State, and every um, St. Patrick's Day, which is you know obviously a huge drinking holiday in college, the bars would open up at 4 a.m., and he would be in front of the line. He would wear his adult diaper. Oh, he would God. get on the bar stool and not leave that bar stool until he passed out. He would just sit there and pee his pants. And the lucky gentlewoman that he meets and takes home that evening. (laughs) That's Gavin Newsom. Do you think, (laughs) are these two statements equivalent? You know, when you'd listen to like Dr. Laura and someone would go, I'm calling for a friend. I have erectile (laughs) difficulties and I want to know if it's the warts that are causing that for a friend. I knew a guy yeah, in yeah. college. Yeah. yeah. I threw in Chico batting. State as a red herring, too. I'm but, sorry you yeah. got me. About the you same got ratio. I know a handsome fella. Yeah. Handsome fella. <laughs> That's right. What gotcha. else we got, Gina? Can we find well, that commercial with uh, the hummus? Do we know what that thing's called? You might have to Google hummus. portable bidet and see I'm what looking. comes up. Yeah, I found one with a, a peanut butter bagel, but I'm looking for the, the hummus. <laughs> What? <laughs> Hold on. I need clarification. Peanut butter on the bagel? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Peanut butter. Okay. They, well, yeah, they slathered be, peanut be butter clear, all over the that bagel. that makes a difference. Yeah, they washed it, it up. All right. Whew. Well, these two guys might need an adult diaper. I'm really not sure what condition they're in right now because Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville landed in the hospital two days into filming Jackass 4. Bam Margera broke the news in a video revealing the injuries. He says, second day of filming Jackass and already Steve-O and Knoxville are hospitalized by jumping on a full-speed treadmill with band equipment, including a tuba. Oh, boy. So Jackass will be the first film involving the whole Jackass cast to be made since the death of cast member Ryan Dunn in 2011. He was 34. The fourth movie opens March 5th, 2021, allegedly. 
hoping everybody gets back together. Well, both good dudes. Uh, Johnny's a great guy, and Steve we know as well. And uh, that's a funny bit if you're kind of picturing holding a tuba or trombone or piccolo or whatever and jumping on. Those are hilarious on, movies. Jumping on a full-speed uh, treadmill. But, uh, yeah, it's got to it's got to happen. Uh, the right. the yes. personal excitement for shooting these things must be getting lower for them. I mean, as you get older, just the thought of jumping. I mean, I, you know, there are moments when I wake up and lay in bed and I go, okay, I'm going to have to stand up now. Let's see what happens to my back. Well, you know, uh, and I'm 41. Did. I mean, yeah. these guys, their bodies are like 300 years old. I just can't imagine they're, they have the same level of enthusiasm for these bits. That's true. But Steve-O did say something to the effect on this show of he really does do these stunts with a full, uh, you know, with, with clarity now because he's sober, which makes them extra intense and extra terrifying. Sure. Yeah, okay. I experienced this last night and it's one of those uh, getting old moves where I walked upstairs to the bedroom to go to bed, got to the bed, realized I left my eye mask, my eye shade mask in my office, and I just stood next to my bed and was like, ugh, got to go back, <laughs> got to go all the way back down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Got to take that shade off while you're in the bed, in the bedroom. Oh, sure. You can't do that move where yeah. you where you pull it up mm. uh, and put on your forehead and go about your business because uh, it always get left somewhere. All right. What else we got, Gina Grad? Well, since we're talking about entertainment, we got a couple of reboots coming our way. NBC is developing a sequel series to Night Court, according oh. to Variety. Oh, boy. We, I mean, we've been begging for it. Original series star John Lara Kett will return as Dan Fielding, while Big Bang Theory star Melissa Rauch will executive produce. Hey, you ever, see, you ever see that actor who played Bull? You ever see that guy run? Oh, it is oh, a shit, shit show. Yeah. Oh, thank you, fella. It is yeah, a it's like fucking, one of the car dealerships. Oh, it's, oh, it's fucking hard. It's hard to watch. So Richard, sitcom, Richard Mall. No, Richard. No. Um, Mall. No. Richard. Mall? I think you're actually right. I'm sorry. I think you're right. Richard Hello, Mall. Well, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. I was thinking Martin Mall. Yeah. I he, I don't think he's with us. I think he was claimed by a ceiling fan many years ago. <laughs> uh, Richard Mall. Mall. M O L L. All right, I'll I'll take credit for Richard Mull. Yeah. So this version will follow quote unapologetic optimist Judge Abby Stone, daughter of the original series character Harry Stone. And wait, there's more. Seth MacFarlane is producing a reboot of Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, Keith and Kenny Lucas, the identical twin brothers known for co-starring in 22 Jump Street, are set to write and star in it. According to Variety, the movie won't be a remake. Instead, the contemporary reimagining will pontificate about today's nerd culture and what even constitutes a geek. In but the you can't have a revenge. Of the, the nerds have won. They won. Yeah, yeah. right. Tech they're is the, the, so it should, the nerds. They're it the alpha be, betas. <laughs> yeah, it should be revenge of the jocks or, That's you know, right. it's like, uh, yeah, interesting. Good point. The uh, Night Court was one of those TV shows where I can't tell if it was good or bad. It was just on TV. And yes. back when there was three channels and you had nothing else to watch, you just watch Night Court. You sure did. And I don't know Archie that anyone, Post. no one ever loved it. It was just oh. there. Yep. This is one of the few shows I ever watched and was aware of uh, as a child. Wasn't wasn't the initial much like John Stamos in uh, in uh, Full House, where he was like he's kind of Elvis rockabilly guy at first, then just kind of became Uncle Jesse. Wasn't Harry Anderson's thing like he was into magic, like yeah, he was yes. a magician. magic trick or something, and they kind of scuttled that. Yeah, real. I don't remember them scuttling it. I Harry, think he was a magician. Yeah, he. He in real life is into it. I and, know what I'm saying. I don't know if yeah. it became much of the show after a year or whatever. Um, I don't know. The fuck they <laughs> they did it. Um, I think it was incorporated in all the way through oh. the seasons, I, I will say, but I don't know. Okay. I just had this like traumatic memory of the last episode of Night Court. Am I right in that the final, the series finale Bull Shannon gets taken by aliens. We can check. Isn't he standing like in Harry's like chambers and then like a light comes on him? I, I, I feel like this is not a familiar. Dream. 
Do you know that song, They Paved Paradise and Put Up a Parking Lot? Joni Mitchell. Okay, that to me is the night court of songs. I don't think I like it. I don't even think it's well made, (laughs) but it is on all the time. You're aware of it. I am aware of it, and I know all the words of it. Uh, Yeah, I agree. And uh, also, you ever seen John Larroquette run? (laughs) <laughs> it's bad. He's like six four. That dude. I've not. Um, we we have your portable bidet commercial ready. Oh, great! With hummus. I'm right. so glad that. Yeah. Put right the into the water bottle. Tube goes in right the, water the water bottle. bottle. Then they uh, turn it over. Yeah. Oh, power spray hummus. So is that better than? Yeah. At least they didn't dollop the hummus onto the clay. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, so you pat you put it in clay mass. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. They're like power washing the glass. It shows yeah. just how much it can it can take off. So yeah. basically, this thing you drop a hose into a water bottle and then you have pressurized water, right? And and kudos to your production crew for finding that, but. The one that I looked at was even different. So multiple portable bidet companies have decided in their brainstorm meetings that hummus is a fair representation. Well, maybe it's big hummus wanting to move product. You know what I mean? I I see this as big hummus. Maybe there's some crossover here. Pretty logical. Uh, Big chickpea. The thing about the portable bidet is doesn't all the runoff end up in your pants? Or like, how do you? <laughs> now, where do you aim that? I feel like I would have to lay on my back on a sewer grate to really <laughs> properly pull this maneuver off. And that would draw eyeballs because after yeah. all, I am a celebrity. Yeah, you got to go right. on a bicycle maneuver where your elbows and shoulder blades are on the ground propping you up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. That's your only option. <laughs> On the dirty floor, which is why you have the bidet. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I could do this or I could just shit at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the problem also is you have to carry around a two liter of water. Yeah. 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 Or soda water. Yeah. I, soda water, I, I yeah. also, I got to believe that all the Starbucks on every corner has added to this problem because how many times has this happened? And if you're listening at home, we're just going to dedicate another 20 minutes to shit talk, and then we're going to cap it. I started this. I'm sorry. Cap, Actually, we're going to cap Gina it. Gina started it. but We'll it's cap true. it at a tight 40. Um, how many times has this happened to you? You get up in the morning. You have your morning constitution. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. You go up. You go into the kitchen. You pour yourself a nice, big, hot, piping hot black cup of joe. And then you start sucking on the coffee and you start walking out to your car. And at some point you stop and you go, oh, there's more in the hopper. Like I the thing about the thing about coffee, coffee will find shit you didn't know you had. That's right. You you think that uh, pencils out of lead. It isn't. You just haven't. You have to use coffee. Coffee will find it. You can go and take the biggest shit in the morning uh, ever in the morning, but at some point you're drinking coffee and it's like, uh oh, there's something no, else in right. there. So think, <laughs> think about all the people that take the dump in Manhattan, yeah. leave yeah. the apartment, grab the latte, the tall boy latte, start walking for the subway, and then like, oh wait a minute, gotta get one of those quarters, get back in the bathroom. This right. is why diuretics. This is why performance enhancing, you know, uh, athletes. It's illegal for them to take diuretics, not because it increases their performance, because it pulls literally everything out of their body and flushes it. So even if you do steroids, you have some diuretics, it's gone. Mm. And, and I would I would argue that coffee is well, coffee is a diuretic, of course. And right. why, you know, the term diuretic, we're just getting so close there. You yeah. know? It's funny you know when, it when you're talking about performance enhancing and pulling everything out of your body, I was thinking, <laughs> well, that would help if you're pole vaulting. Yeah. But I don't know for the hammer throw. I don't. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me hit uh, True Nige in here. As we age, start to see uh, and uh, feel uh, it in your bones, and you can see it in your face. They're creams that claims to give you uh, younger skin and emergency shots that give you youthful energy. Let's look deeper beneath the surface on how we can contract. Sorry, counteract 
the effects of aging. True Nigen helps us age better by supporting the energy generating engines that exist in our bodies, helping us to restore youthful energy. Tiny repair enzymes work deep into your cells to help you recover from lifestyle routines that are hard on your body, including sleep deprivation, intense workouts, poor diet. True Nigen supports these enzymes. True Nigen is safety tested and backed by Nobel winning sci- Nobel Prize winning scientists. Age smarter with True Nigen. Right now, new customers can save 20 bucks on a three-month supply of True Nigen at TrueNigen. Dot com while supplies last, right, Dawson? These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What else we got, Gina Gran? So, a San Francisco district is planning to rename a school named after Abraham Lincoln because the former president did not demonstrate that Black Lives mattered to him according to the Daily Mail. (laughs) The president, who is often uh, held up as an American hero for abolishing slavery, is just one of 44 historical figures soon to have their names scratched off schools within San Francisco in the Unified School District. Other names include uh, George Washington, Herbert Hoover, Senator Dianne Feinstein, Feinstein, uh, whose name will be stripped from the elementary school of her name. You know why? Because in 1984... When she was mayor, she allowed the Confederate flag to fly outside City Hall. The Uh district's renaming committee decided Lincoln is not worthy of keeping his name on Abraham Lincoln High School because, quote, the majority of his policies proved to be detrimental to Native Americans. Oh, wait a minute. Lincoln, this is Native Americans. This isn't. Well, he didn't he didn't prove he was down with the Black Lives Matter. It's all encompassing. What, what, What was his take on the space program? Uh, and limited. other shit that didn't exist <laughs> didn't, for 200 he years. He never hashtagged BLM once on Abraham Lincoln's Instagram page. I do love the fact that if you're some Yenta Karen and you scroll out BLM and go down to the fucking rally so you can hear what Common has to say and uh, <laughs> yell at a poor boy, somehow you're in. <laughs> but if you emancipate slaves, <laughs> got yeah. get them out of here. Not as good as it gets. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, that's I used to it. live I used to live at Gardner and Sunset, and there was the Michael Jackson Elementary School there. Oh, really? So there was there Michael was. Jackson Elementary, but then all the news came out and they put this giant sign over his name for many years. And then he died and they took the sign down. So it was like it was he was in, he was out, he was oh. in. They didn't just and, uh make it after the uh AM talk radio guy, Michael Jackson. Correct. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's the one I'm referring to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm telling you if, um, if Abe Lincoln is on the table for dismissal, <laughs> like if, if his, if he's on the table for cancel culture, we're all vulnerable. Frederick like, Douglass is next. I got it for you next, Corolla. Amelia Earhart, <laughs> fucking check your mirrors, bitch. You didn't fly barely any black people. Don't forget, remember a story, I think it was from last year, earlier this year, a statue of Mahatma Gandhi being taken down. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, now I can see. And also, we're going to have to be careful when we name future elementary schools and bridges because they're going to go, well, we're thinking about going with uh, Alex Trebek. And I'm going to go, well, that's problematic. And people yeah. are going to go, why? And I go, because he was fucking born. And that's Just the wait. time we're living <laughs> Just in. Just you wait. So everyone who's been born is off. Yep. We're going to have to come Which up is- with people who haven't been born. No, just an animal. That's why you oh, put up a bear right. or an eagle or because it's, you know, or or this is why previous civilizations have created Zeus and Athena because it was mm. just easier to do that. Mm. Right. That's true. Yeah. yeah, but I don't like, uh, Michael, I don't like that you pick those very predatory animals. I think that's <laughs> yeah, those, also very <laughs> problematic. My apologies. Yes, and New also. York, New York's got it figured out with the PS 182 Yeah, that's or right. Whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. the public mm-hmm. school system, yeah. I know, but it's always so anticlimactic when you're talking to someone from New York. You go, where'd you go? And everyone else is like, out here. Like, I went to Burroughs. I, I went to Kennedy. Like, And then you go, where'd you go? I went to P-7R. Yeah. It's like, blah. It sounds like a license plate that was near the school. It does. 
I, I like names on schools, right? I mean, uh, remember, uh, I'm trying to think. So my, when I was at, let's see, my high school, I was at North Hollywood High, so nothing. Yeah, they're just named after the district. Nothing That's there. But, we you know, yeah. we would play Kennedy. Um, there was Lincoln. They had Burroughs. Uh, oh, Muir. I think we played like probably oh, John Muir or something. John Muir. Mm-hmm. Had a John Muir out problematic, there. Problematic. Yeah. Polly. Did he love trees too much? What's wrong with John Muir? <laughs> Don't know. I definitely did something to a black person at some point. Uh, yeah, Polly High, Van Nuys. Grant. There was a Grant. Oh, what about Grant? Go. Grant's Grant's, uh, Grant's in Van Nuys. Grant's got to go, yeah, right? Can't it can't that. still be Grant. Is Grant still Grant? I bet. I think Grant is still Grant. Wow. Yeah. Well, oh, there's Monroe. That's right. That's right. Maryland. I don't know. Oh, Monroe. Yeah. Probably president. But oh, uh, sure. what Grant? What was Grant? Yes, Grant? What is, Ulysses S. Ulysses. Grant? I guess. I, it was just, it. it's just Grant. The kids there were so fucking dumb. They have no idea what it was. They just think, <laughs> a Grant's like a free loan, right? Well, that's also <laughs> the thing is never in the education of those schools do they take a day and teach the kids the Who name of the person. Was. I mean, that would almost, that's that would true. be wonderful if they did, but they never yeah. do it. I start going through the, the schools in my head and I go, I, I don't know, all my schools, I don't know any, if these were people, ideas. <laughs> well, I know this would get me thrown out of the groundlings, but when I went to Walter <laughs> Reed Junior High, I, I now know that Walter Reed invented uh, the cure for malaria, I think, which great. is, they there did give us a stupid little symposium on who uh, Walter Reed yeah. is. Yes, Ulysses S. Grant High School. And any, th- I don't know, I'm going to label it problematic and we'll see if it, and, he's, yes. He's considered one of our worst presidents in the bottom uh, quartile usually. So maybe, you know, history has not shined uh, like a positive light on him. Well, uh, George Washington Carver, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to start doing my joke, basically, which is uh, I, when I, I did some pilot, blah, 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 animated, blah, blah, blah. But um, if you can see that, if we can find the beginning of that, yeah. it's uh, I did this 10 years ago, but uh, it was George Washington <laughs> Junior High, but we just put Carver on it. And then it was Home of the Braves, but we got rid of the Braves and put a Viking right. helmet on it and I, I it seemed like a joke at the time but I don't know yeah. the price of a new sign you know I think they're going to be modified all right let's do one more Gina Gran all right so authorities in Indiana are searching for a murder suspect who escaped from a prison transport van how did he do that well police said that this 22 year old Leon Taylor was being transferred from O'Hare in Chicago the airport to Lake County Indiana when the driver of the van got a little peckish stopped at a McDonald's drive through to grab some food while they were waiting in line Taylor reportedly asked the driver to roll down the window so he could just spit out the window When the window was open, Taylor managed to shimmy out of the vehicle and run off. And by the way, handcuffed and fitted with leg restraints, pulled this Mm. off, and they still haven't found him. Well, I want that man to be free because he's got something called he's got something called Moxie. You know, he's got grit. He reminds me of me when I was a young prisoner. Shimmy out of the back of cars. It is very, very hard to not root for an escaped prisoner. And then the media always tries to remind you of, of why they're in there in the first place. But I'm sorry, you got out. Those two guys in, in New York, when they remember when they broke yes. out and they were on yeah. the run for three months. Yeah. Oh, I was every day searching the internet for more <laughs> stories about them, rooting for them. And then finally they ruined it by saying one of them killed a couple people. And I was like, oh. well, that sucks, but it is cool that they're out. Yeah, he's not a folk hero anymore. If yeah. if you uh, if you drove that van, you your next stop is a, a desolate slice of highway where you ball up your fist <laughs> and punch yourself in the face, and then ghost ride the van into a tree, and yeah. then lay down next to it and go, "Oh my god!" Yeah, it can't be at a fucking drive-through at Wendy's. You cannot. He you had a. Yeah. Yeah, he had a pretty bad day. You can't make that call from yeah. from the Wendy's parking lot. You have you to more than Denny Jr. That shit. 
Yeah, you got a Morton Downey Jr. and uh, oh shit, I'm trying to—I don't know why that movie. What Brian? What's the movie where uh, they went to wine country and he ghost rid the shop? Oh yeah, uh, sideways. Did sideways. To make the car look more damaged, they drove it into a you, tree. You better sideways that shit, bitch. Do you think that prisoner bus just had one of those like window locks for the driver to just click? You know, like that would have yeah, solved the whole like the problem. Yeah, the child lock. Oh, why didn't I just? Lock but the with windows? leg restraints, and yeah. he got it. Or, 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 and I, I will, I will be watching the story in the next few days. Is that the story that the van driver is sticking to? Right. I just rolled down the window so he could spit, and like just like that, he was, uh, he was gone in the night. Yeah, I would be super laxed with leg restraints because first off, you know how close a prisoner's dick gets to your ear. When you try to put those bad boys on. Sure, I didn't think Uncomfortably that. close. And those yeah. guys have not felt the touch of a woman in a long, long time. And well, you're, ears the your hairy ass ears far. looking pretty fucking fetching about then. And that, I, they would do to you what you were going to do to Sonny if he gets an earring. That's right. Well, no, Gina, first off, I'm not a weirdo. Oh, what? sorry. All right, sorry. I didn't mean and to Michael that. needs context. Where'd that he come does. from? I told my <laughs> son, <laughs> please. Contacts, and uh, you're not. You're, you're not right. I made you look like a psychopath. You go ahead and inform him. If he wants to get one single stud like Jerry Rice, I got no problems with it. I'm saying when you start getting the big hoops that get progressively bigger, my God, what do they call those? The gauges. gauges. The gauges. Oof, those you are, keep those doing. You start pulling that gauge shit on me, son. <laughs> and here's my promise. When it gets big enough for my dick, I will come up behind you at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and that'll be your choice. That'll be solely your choice. Because you certainly don't have to do it. And by the way, you don't know the circumference of my dick, and I'm not going to no. tell you. Especially in gauge form. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, yeah yep. That's right. But keep going, yeah, boy. I don't know. We'll see how tough. this ends up. It's tough to be a prisoner escaped prisoner and you kind of try to go to the Denny's and get something to eat and you got handcuffs on, but the foot restraints too makes it tough. He, he, he can't say all oh, me and the boys were having some fun. I lost the key. Can I just get the grand slam? But I mean, it, right. it's tough. Yeah, He's not going to make it far. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I feel like he's catchable. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Should we bring it home? Gina grad. You got it. I'm Gina grad. And that's the news. Gina, Gina grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, last but not least, there's Geico. Do you own? Do you rent? Well, you work hard. Your time is precious. How about you do a little bundling with Geico? You go to geico.com. Makes it easy to bundle your homeowners and renters insurance along with your auto policy. And uh, just go to geico.com. You get a quote. See just how much you could be saving when you bundle at geico.com. That is geico.com. Oh, whoa. I should give some plugs to uh, Michael Costin, his very funny stand up special. Detroit, New York, LA, available now on comedycentral.com. Good to see you again, my friend. Always, <clears throat> excuse me, always appreciate it. Thanks very much, you guys. I enjoyed this.